So it seems like not too long ago, there was a blue phase hitting the market. And so everybody was putting out their own blue flanker. And so of course we have the blue to Chanel's of the world and we had Narciso Rodriguez blue noir and everybody was all about blue. It seems like lately there's been a resurgence of red, Versace Eros Flame, by Killian Rolling in Love, Parfum de Marley Kalan, Baccarat Rouge 540 x ray the list goes on and on. So today I'm going to take 10 red fragrances and I'm going to rank them from 10 to 1, so make sure to stay tuned. Before I begin the video, I do want to take a moment to invite you to the Parfum de Marly Boutique this Friday. It's going to be an event to celebrate the launch of Kalan by Parfum de Marly, which I know came out some time ago, but this is the official launch and we're celebrating it with a release party. Uh, I believe it's going to be between 6 and 9. I'm going to leave all the information down below. It's going to be in the meatpacking district of Manhattan, and so if you've never been there before, it's a really cool boutique, uh, recently renovated, but you do have to RSVP because because it is a really small space and so they one want to know how many people are going to come to the event but two how many like appetizers and how much champagne they should have available for the event so i hope you can make it it's going to be fun if you've ever been to one of these events you know it's very chill and laid back there's no dress code there's no admittance fee you just show up have a good time hang out and talk fragrances so uh it goes without saying Colin by parfum de marley will be in this list because it's one of the newer releases and it is a red bottle it's also a fragrance that i really enjoy but will it make it to the number one spot let's see so a couple of fragrances that are not going to be in this list are like baccarat rouge 540 x-ray tom ford's lost cherry because i know i can already anticipate i'm going to get like 100 comments of why didn't you include this or that and there are some fragrances that i just don't own and if it didn't make it in this list maybe i didn't even really enjoy it but truth be told i did select all 10 of these fragrances at random but it goes without saying that i sort of started thinking and curating it in my head before actually you know picking them up off the shelf and putting it in this list. And so there are some in here that I do enjoy, but some more than others, it goes without saying. And also there's going to be a giveaway attached to this video. Make sure to stay tuned until the very end so you know what you need to do to enter the giveaway. Number 10 on this list, Creed Viking. Uh, this is one that I don't overly love. Uh, it's not one of my favorite creeds. Uh, there are many creeds that I really enjoy. Creed Aventus, Virgin Island Water, Millisium Imperial, Spice and Wood, Original Santal. These are all great fragrances. I, You know what? On second thought, I could have probably put Original Santal in this list and it would have made it a little bit higher, but Creed Viking is nice. I know a lot of people going into it, they thought to themselves, will it live up to the hype of Aventus or the success of Aventus? And I also find it a little unfair to compare this one to Aventus because one, they smell completely different, but also it's a fragrance in its own right. And so I can kind of see what a lot of these companies are doing, especially my 10 and 9 uh, fragrance in this list is they're adding like a mint note and the mint is supposed to add like a fiery accord this one does it but my number nine does it too and this one is versace eros flame and so it kind of takes that sweet vibe this one is more on the green side of things this one uh, definitely has that sweetness lingering underneath uh, which is also found in the original of course the original was very heavy on the tonka bean the vanilla a little spicy as well with a hint of cinnamon this one actually a lot of people compared to this fragrance right here, which is by Caron, it's called L'Anarchiste. And I can kind of see what they mean in terms of it being like a masculine sort of traditional fougere sort of a scent. But I do think that ultimately Creed Viking is a bit different. This one is a bit more on the mature side. This one is a bit more on the playful clubbing side. But uh, I do like this one a little bit more than Creed Viking for its versatility. But it goes without saying Creed Viking smells a lot more natural to my nose. Number eight on this list is a fragrance that I've also had the opportunity of reviewing. I really enjoy this one, uh, but there is another fragrance in here that has a similar DNA that perhaps I like a little bit more. But this one by Tiziana Terenzi is called Porpora. So this one has a rose nuance that I really enjoy. Uh, the rose does come across smelling rather natural. And I think by this point in the list, we've also noticed that just because they come in a red bottle doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to smell similar. And so this one's very masculine. Uh, it has a mint 
uh, vibe to it. This one is definitely sweet. This one spotlights a note of rose. And perhaps this is probably the most accurate in terms of representing uh, through the bottle design and the coloration what the fragrance will actually smell like because roses are red, of course, and violets are blue. Uh, but this one I really enjoy. I think it's a light, wispy rose. There's an added sensuality to it. There's also an elegant nature to it. Uh, it's definitely the kind of fragrance that I could see myself wearing in uh, like a formal scenario, be it a wedding or something of that nature just because it definitely smells expensive and I like that it didn't just like couple rose with agarwood to a large extent like a lot of other Middle Eastern fragrances do. The next one on this list, okay, confession, it's not a red bottle, but the box is red. And so I thought that that was kind of cool. This one by a zoologist is called Tyrannosaurus Rex or T-Rex. And I remember when I met Victor Wong at Perfumery in Manhattan, he had me try this one prior to its release. And uh, I'm familiar with the work of Antonio Gardoni from Bogue. And so I remember smelling this one and I was like, yeah, this is going to be different. And it's definitely not a zoologist that I would recommend just because it's so challenging and so aggressive. I think for somebody who's like just getting into niche and just getting their feet wet, I would probably recommend something like Hummingbird or... Um, the reformulation of Panda, or even Squid. Squid is an awesome scent, uh, but this is one that's definitely a little harder to get along with, but it's definitely one of the more captivating scents that the brand has to offer with that sort of smoky birch cade oil thing going on, a little bit of that rose oxide to add a bloody metallic touch to the composition. Super unique. The next one on this list is by Mancera. And this one is called Red Tobacco. This is definitely one of my favorite tobacco fragrances ever. It's creamy, it's spicy, it's a little sensual. It's a little moist as well, so it's not a leafy tobacco like Creed Tabarome, which I actually really dislike. Uh, but it's one of the sweeter uh, tobacco fragrances out there. Uh, kind of like a tobacco vanille, but not not overdosing on the sweetness. I think, you know, there are some that are very true to form and Bois d'Ombre by Eau de Tali is a very true to form tobacco. This one is definitely on the spicy side, but again, it's not overly sweet and I really enjoy that. So now we're getting into the top five of this list and the number five fragrance is actually one that I've reviewed recently on my channel and it's one that I love and I think it's a holy grail cherry scent. And the irony of this one is that it actually doesn't contain any cherry. I'm sure there's the use of some aroma chem in here that gives off that cherry smell. And I think it's exceptionally well done. This one from the House of Siage is called House of Siage Number no. 1. So it's sweet, it's almondy, it has a cherry vibe going on in here. A little cinnamon as well, so it comes across rather sharp. But it's such a unique scent. And for that reason, it's a type of fragrance that I would love to wear in a formal setting. So very similar to this one and perhaps even red tobacco. I can see this one being worn formally as well. Just because it's going to turn heads, it's different. It doesn't really smell like anything that you've gotten your nose on. And I love just how strong and how prominent and unapologetic that cherry note is. Number four on this list is Yet another one that I've recently spoken about, and this one is by Killian. It's called Rolling in Love. And so this one, if you remember uh, from the video that I shot with Steve Asus, who does the U.S. education for the company by Killian, he mentioned that this is a monochromatic fragrance, meaning that it's inspired by one color. And believe it or not, that color is not red. It's actually white, which is really the absence of color. And so it has a lot of musks in here. It has between like five and seven musk notes, and some of which give off a lectonic feel to the fragrance, and so it comes across smelling a little milky. There are also some creamy white florals utilized in the blend. I think maybe a little bit of jasmine heliotrope as well, if I remember correctly. And it also has that sort of cherry almondy nuance in the opening, but it definitely veers on the uh, floral side, but it doesn't lose its gourmand properties, which I kind of enjoy. Number three on this list, probably thought this was going to be the number one on the list. It's not. Uh, it's by Parfum de Marly and it's Kalan. I really enjoy Kalan. So the thing with Kalan is it has a sweet vibe, it has that roasted tonka bean vibe in the base. I should probably mention that the longevity of this one is ungodly. I mean, it's beast mode longevity. It will last such a long time on your skin. But what I like about Kalan is it kind of has like this aggressive undertone that kind of reminds me of leather. And I know there's already been a ton of people that are like, yeah, I can kind of sense like a leathery vibe in the base. Um, I get it. I know it's not listed in the note breakdown. Of course, leather is a synthetic 
note or a cord. There's no natural leather, right? You cannot distill the essence from leather. Uh, but this is an interesting scent in the regards that not only does it have that thing going on in the base, but it also has this thing going on in the opening where it kind of reminds me of an ingredient called mastic oil or lentisk. And I'm of Greek descent. And so in Greece, it's called masticha. They make like desserts out of it. It's a, res a resin that comes from a tree. They also make chewing gum out of it. And so it kind of reminds me of that in the opening. It's a very unique smell. If you have an opportunity, perhaps maybe come to the event this Friday, you can smell it in person. I do find it to be a fairly unique scent. Number two on this list could have very easily been number one on this list. For me, it's a holy grail rose scent. I paid well over $300 for it when it first came out. I think it's worth the money, and when the bottle runs out, I will repurchase. Uh, this one is from the House of Amouage, and this one is called Lyric for Men, or Lyric Man. What I really enjoy about this one is, I would probably say the same thing that I said about Porpora by Tiziana Terenzi, except I do find this one to be a little bit more unique, a little bit more original. I think that this one, again, doesn't do that sort of rose oud thing that you see a lot with fragrances, especially in the Middle East. Um, I like how it has the sort of ethereal nature of the rose. It smells very natural, uh, very hypnotizing, but it also has that lime note in the opening that just makes it so refreshing and it's so different in the air. Uh, it's one thing when you spray it on skin and you press it up to your nose right away and when you're smelling it on somebody. It's a completely different experience and it smells divine in the air. It also has a little bit of that frankincense thing that Amouage does a lot with their fragrances and so I really enjoy Lyric Man. And getting into the number one fragrance on this list, I actually sprayed it. I don't know if the test strip is here, but I wanted to re-experience the scent because I love this fragrance so much. And uh, this is one where, okay, a little bit of bias is coming in here because this was actually gifted to me by my wife when we were still just dating. I don't even think we were engaged at the time. And I really wanted a bottle of this in my collection. And I knew that, you know, this is probably, this is definitely 100% the strongest fragrance in this entire list. Uh, I might also be the sweetest fragrance in the list. Maybe not sweeter than Versace Eros Flame, but we'll get to that. This one by Montal is called Red Oud. And what I love about this one is one, my wife bought it for me. Two, I love the smell. Three, uh, she got it for me for Christmas. And so I wore it that entire week. And of course, I'm a teacher. And so during Christmas time, I have like a week and a half off from work. It's amazing. I get to just unplug, relax. And um, I know it's probably not fair to say this because I feel like I'm living my best life right now. Uh, but at the time, I definitely had less stress. I had fewer responsibilities, fewer worries. I felt as though my life wasn't complete, you know, with the birth of my daughter, that definitely made my life feel complete. But uh, it definitely reminds me of a time where I just had less on my mind. And so, you know, every time I smell it, I kind of wish I could go back, but there's just so much awesome stuff going on in my life right now that I wouldn't trade it for the world. But Thank you all so much for tuning in. I really do appreciate it. These have been 10 random fragrances from my collection ranked. I hope you like this video. If you want me to do this with a different color, let me know down below. Also, did you know or were you expecting that Red Oud was going to be my number one fragrance in this list? I know a lot of you who watch my channel uh, probably already speculated that. So thank you for tuning in. I really do appreciate it. As I mentioned towards the beginning of the video, there is going to be a giveaway attached to this video. So one lucky winner will have an opportunity of experiencing any three fragrances that you want to experience in this list. All you need to do is just leave a comment down below and let me know, given the opportunity, uh, which of these fragrances would you like to sample the most? And I will make this international as well. So you can live anywhere in the world three five milliliter decans, so 15 milliliters worth of juice will go to one lucky winner, and I will select the winner in one week's time. So make sure to come back to this video in one week to see if your comment has been pinned to the top of the comment thread. That's how I announce winners on my channel. Also, once again, if you are in the area uh, this Friday, again, all the information is gonna be down below. I would love to meet you in person. Definitely come out to the event. We're gonna have a fun time, and a lot of other fragrance reviewers will be attending that event as well. So it's a nice little get together, a nice little meet and greet that's gonna happen. 
Thanks again so much for tuning in. If you are new to this channel and you took something of value from this video, I would love it if you could support this channel. It's easy and it's free. All you got to do is click that red subscribe button in the corner. And this way, whenever I do upload future videos, they will get delivered straight to your feed. You never need to worry about missing any of my future content. And of course, that includes top 10 videos like this, fragrance reviews, giveaways, unboxings, special guests, and a whole lot more. Thanks again for watching. I love you all. See you next time. Bye.